Regular viewers of the channel know that we're in the process of building a house on top of a mountain and I'm at the point now where I need to scribe my forms to the bedrock. It's kind of a big challenge and I'm hoping to build an adjustable scribe that will make the job easier. The stock I've chosen for this project is a chunk of lumber salvaged from some old furniture. This happens to be poplar. It's probably 70, 80 years since it was cut, so I know that it's very dimensionally stable. If you're going to build this same sort of project, you can most likely use any wood, but if you can find some older wood that's done moving, it'll, it'll just make the whole process easier. Poplar is not the hardest wood. It's probably not the ideal choice for this, but it machines very well, and this particular piece is very dimensionally stable. The size I chose is somewhat arbitrary, limited to what I could cut off of the thing, and it is an inch and three quarters by one inch. The first step is going to be to cut a groove down in the center. Milling out my stock is relatively simple. I'm going to end up with a wider groove. On this side, so that a, a wooden platform can slide up and down in there. And then in the dead center, I'm going to have to have a thinner groove all the way through so that my bolt can slide. On the back side, I'm going to have to have another groove, but it's going to have to be a little wider. Basically just for the head of the bolt to slip down in, this will only have to be you know, very, very thin. And then, of course, in the center of that, somehow I will still have to have my bit there for the bolt to slide through. Little nervous. I wish the head of this bolt was a lot bigger. We'll just have to see how it goes. If I mismachine it, I mean, I can always start over with a new piece, or maybe I can find a different bolt. But that's what I'm going to try to use. I'm going to get the saw set up for this. I want this cut, this groove here, to be a quarter of an inch deep. So we'll get the saw blade set up for that. And then, again, this width is somewhat arbitrary, but uh, seven-eighths to one inch of meat in the center, and I would be happy with that. Amount. How big is that? That's about three eighths. Okay. So we'll set this at about the same. Start making some passes. So there's our main groove, and basically something is going to, uh, not this obviously, but something is going to slide up and down in it, and then I can adjust and clamp and keep everything straight that way. So here are the layout lines. You might not be able to see them very well, but I've come four inches from each end, and I've made a stop point. What I'm going to do is this will actually have a rolling point that is permanently attached here at the bottom so that it can follow along the bedrock and, and give me the best possible line I can hope for. So it's fine that I've got these stop areas in here and, and that's a lot of wood that will help hold the whole scribe together and it will give me an adjustable scribe scope of about 16 inches up and down more than enough for what I'm trying to do. Otherwise, I can always I can always extend it up off the top 
you know, another another two inches or so. Who knows? I might end up doing that anyways. But now what I want to do is go to the drill press and I'm going to drill stop holes right here and then try to figure out some way to cut this super straight and clean. I'm hoping to use the table saw and then maybe clean it up by hand. So there are my stop cuts. Now I'm going to do something It's probably not in your table saw manual. I'm going to plunge through and then move this forward and back until I I get to my holes. I don't know how dangerous it actually is. It's, it's probably going to be just fine. Um, you know, just be aware of kickback. Keep your fingers clear. And you'll have to run your blade all the way up, unfortunately, in order to not end up with too much cut on this side. It'll make sense when I'm done. Now I got a straight groove. Pencil's going to go through. You can see I've I've switched over. I got a little carried away if I'm honest, but I switched over to uh, a carriage bolt. So I suppose the next step is to cut the groove for the carriage bolt itself so that it will clear going up and down. gonna be just fine. Next step is for me to be uh, cleaning this up with some sandpaper and then give it a coat of spray lacquer. I want to do that to not only waterproof it some because it's gonna be in a pretty harsh environment but I want to seal it and keep things from warping and twisting but I also want that lacquer to have a chance to dry and this to get all fuzzy so that I can re-sand the track. If I just make it all out of the plain wood, either I'll have to leave so much slop when I machine this part that it'll wobble around, not that that would be a big deal at all, or it'll get it just get stuck. So I'm gonna go ahead and sand this, get it sprayed, get it drying, and then we can work on machining the next part. I just realized before I can finish it, I have to glue on the, let's call it the stylus, the, the roller at the end. And so this is the stick I made up, it's literally a stick, this happens to be elm, just some scrap I had on hand. And I've also changed the roller. The reason I picked the other one was because it was a sealed bearing. This is an open bearing and I was worried about it getting rock dust and other stuff in there. And I just realized, why do I care? I mean, honestly, it's not going to have that long a lifespan. So this goes in like that. This roller goes on like that. And then this is how it will roll along, along the base of the rock. 
it's with the larger roller it's not going to give me quite as accurate a scribe but it is concrete forms and this is already um, overly complicated to solve the problem a stick would have been okay anyways I am going to now attach these I'm just gonna glue it together and then then I can spray it and we'll move on to making the pencil holder while the main scribe's drying I made some more parts so this is the pencil holder you can see it's it's just a, a stick slit in half it's got a screw hole through it pencil fittings there and then I got a wing nut that'll tighten up right there I have not yet drilled the center line hole but that's coming too and then I made up the parts for a pendulum and a pendulum will help make sure you've got this thing uh, reasonably straight up and down so I'm gonna go ahead and spray all of those because they are now ready for a coat of finish and I'm sure if they don't get something they'll probably warp so I'll go do that then we'll do final assembly and fitment here is the finished final product so we'll put it together real quick this is the pencil holder so that goes in there it's held in with that bolt which rides in that track in the back side locks that one in place and then the pencil will slip in any pencil will fit that and that is this setup here now that pencil is locked solid then we have the pendulum so we'll put the pendulum together that is this setup right here. So that's that bolt. So the point of that is to tell me when I am straight up and down. And it is supposed to key off of this wing nut i.e. when the wing nut straight up and down so is the pendulum unfortunately it's gonna hit no big deal we'll just tighten it at an extra amount so there is the entire setup 17 inches of travel so I can accommodate a 17 inch long drop. I believe it's going to work great. Let's go test it out. So this is what we're working on. I need to scribe these boards so they fit the mountain here. I started by attaching two cleats to my upper form board. Now I'll temporarily screw this right in place. I've discovered this is really hard on the pencil. So you have to frequently sharpen it, but you got to keep it pretty blunt it'll just come right off now we adjust this to the lowest point and the lowest point is going to be right here Tricky part. You just 
got to keep her reasonably secure. my piece cut. Now we remove the cleats. And then I can drop this in place. Downsides of using a wheel this large. There's only sharp, sharp radiuses that leaves a hole like that. Oh well. I don't believe it's going to matter for as far as concrete's concerned. Now I take my pencil and I mark the back. And I'll go cut that with a skill saw. And drop it in place. Definitely we want to use a smaller wheel than that. I went too far to the extreme. I went from too small to too big. But still, if you didn't have transitions quite as abrupt as these, it would work fine. This is still going to work fine. But that's that's how it goes. Just keep the little pointer more or less straight. And off you go.